preserved for our walk in this world. They resound. Dear lover of God, so glad that you have joined us today. As Luke writes to Theophilus, whether that's an individual or whether it's a group of people or whether it's written to you and to me, which it is, he's writing to those that love God. And he's given us a story, a full story, an account of the things that led up to the birth of Christ and the birth of Christ and his life beginning as an infant through his death. And so we learn so much from Luke's account of the gospel of that good news that is Jesus Christ. And so far as we have spent time together in the Gospel of Luke, we are in Luke chapter 2, and the angels have now announced that the Messiah, the Christ, has been born. And they have given glory to God in the highest. And now it was the time of purification. It's the time when babies are presented at the temple. And so Mary and Joseph take Jesus and they make that journey, and they present him at the temple. Luke chapter 2, verse 22. And what we have here is a long reading as we go through verse 38. But I just want to let Luke speak to us, let Luke tell us the story. And I'll pull out maybe one or two things at the end. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 22. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the wound shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there's a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the spirit of the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed him and blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for redemption, for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew, became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. It's a beautiful story. It's the time of purification. It's the time when, having given birth now, Mary goes through the process of, of purification. It's a time to present Jesus, the firstborn male, as uh, to the Lord. And you might remember from your Old Testament studies that the firstborn was always given to the Lord, but yet the tribe of Levi was the substitute for that. But Jesus was presented as, as he should have been. And during this time, there are these two events, Simeon and Anna. And both of them see Jesus and both of them praise God. Both of them in, in different ways recognize that this baby is the salvation that God has promised to his people and to the world. Luke is laying for us all the events before Christ even opens his mouth to speak. All the events that are showing that this young 
infant, this young child, is the promised Messiah. He is the Christ, the one that everyone should be looking for. Look again to what Simeon says. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. There's a hint there. There's a hint there that Jesus is not just for Israel. That the Christ is for everyone. Reminds me of what God said to Abraham. That through him, all the nations of the world would be blessed. Through him comes Christ. Through him comes the Messiah. And through Christ, through God's anointed, the whole world has access to God has salvation from the wrath of God when they are in and through Jesus the Christ. As we continue to look at Luke's account of the gospel, I hope you are falling more and more in love with God and what he has done for you. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for your blessings, for your care. We thank you for your love. And Father, as John would record in his epistles, we love not we love you because you first loved us. And Father, we thank you for that love and we pray that we will return that love. Return it to you by serving you, return it to you by loving others. Father, forgive us when we become selfish. Forgive us when we become inwardly focused and are more concerned with our wants and desires more than we are with our true need. And that is our need for you. Brother, help us to know that in Christ we can have that relationship with you for eternity. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me and allowing me to join you as we look at the Gospel of Luke. I do look forward to these. I hope you do as well. So until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, the God will bless your day.